All right, Claire is in the house. Oh, you got to turn on your uh, microphone. Turn on your microphone. I'm so Unmute. sorry. I muted That's myself. Okay. okay. Happy birthday. <laughs> well, thank you. I've, I'm such a fan. I've been watching oh. for so long. I just, I just love everything about it. Thank you so much for what you do. Oh, well, I'm, I'm grateful. So do you got something to talk about? You know, I just really want to try something different, something totally different. I'm trying to unlearn. I don't really know that much. I'm realizing that. Okay, well, wait, let me interrupt. I don't know much about what? Dating and relationships, Jonathan. Okay. So but Jonathan! Let's... Just kidding. But Jonathan, I'm supposed to be sitting in my feminine energy and let a man lead. Let okay, me! Okay, so let's 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 work with you today. Let's do a coaching session today. So first, Thank you. I don't know much about dating, okay? But I but let's start with relationship because we have to kind of connect the dots. So uh, first, I would identify what does a relationship look like for you. Now I'm going to share my perspective in a moment, but just very quickly, what does a relationship look like for you? And I'm going to interrupt you when I think you're going down the wrong path, okay? So Hit me with your best shot. Relationship, intimacy, trust, friendship. It's something that seems... So this is what I just heard. Wah, 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 wah. Oh, really? Well, those are just words. Okay, those are words that you want. So, so what you want to say is I want to experience intimacy. I want to experience trust. Now, let me just take it a step further. I want to experience intimacy with another human being. I want to experience trust with another human being. I want to experience, um, what was the other word? Um, um, well, anyway, so, so do you see how I just elaborated on the words you just said, okay? I want to experience intimacy with another human being. You said the word intimacy, but that alone is just a even, word. How I even bring it into the present moment? I am experiencing intimacy. Well, okay, I feel like well, I'm just, I'm, I feel like I'm out. totally going after the wrong person. I made a joke yesterday with my sister that I, I really double down and start stalking when they express no interest in me and not wanting to be my friend or hanging out or anything. That's when I really go for it. All right, now you just completely went down a different train track. So Sorry. I want to come back to the reason why I, I interrupted you and just did the Charlie Brown wah, 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 is that I, I when I said, what are you looking for in a relationship? You said a bunch of words, okay? Well, that's great. Those, But you didn't create context within those words. Okay, so what I'm encouraging you to do, this is taking it deeper than just the word intimacy itself. I want to experience intimacy with another human being. That's taking it deeper than just the word intimacy, okay, as an example, okay? So, and, and by the way, it's beautiful that you want those things. Most human beings want that, okay? So now let's get a little more granular. What does a relationship look like for you? Now, I'll share what it looks like to, from my perspective to give you some context, okay? And by the way, do you feel judged or do you feel like I'm attacking you at all right now? No, but I feel like I know what you're going to say next. Okay. Spending three to five nights a week together, enjoying hobbies, mutual interests. I've heard yeah. you. I've heard you do. You've got a okay. All so why out. do I why do I bring that up incessantly, over and over and over and over again? Because a day in day out relationship requires in spending day in day out time together to not only get to know one another but to bond and create that trust. So why do I say this incessantly? Because most people are dating for entertainment purposes. I'll see you when I want to see you. You know, I want some occasional companionship, occasional co connection, occasional sex, but they're not building on something. So that's why I created the narrative. Right. That's my 
standard. That's my standard. If someone right. can't meet my standard, well, people will say at midlife, I don't have enough time for that. Well, then what's the fucking point? You know, like if you married someone, you would spend all day with, or I mean, not all day, but you would spend a lot of time together. Why not conceptualize it from an end run rather than, of course, not on the first date. Are you going to see someone three times, four times that week? Okay. Now you asked, I need help with dating. What is the purpose of dating? To to see if it's to see if it's um if it's compatible, to see if you to see if you if your lifestyles blend. Okay. To see if you work together. To see, okay? Do you think you're good at to see? I think I, mean, I, 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 I think I really just like fall in love with them like before I even meet them, honestly. Okay, I fall in love with them before I meet them. So let me ask you, you wait, you fall in love with them before you meet them or okay. yeah. So so to me, love is wiping the vomit off of someone's face when they're going through chemotherapy. So you're telling me that you will immediately attach yourself to a person you've never met, okay? And you will give them your entire life. Are they deserving of that? No, of course not. It seems like okay. a mental illness. Well, there could be. It's let's not use the word mental illness, but um, and not not to suggest it might not be. Um, I mean, what, it kind of does feel like that. Okay, so what it is is you probably have a weakened self of self-worth, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-reliance, self-sovereign or sovereignty, excuse me, not self-sovereignty. So you have a propensity to give your power away. Yep. Okay. We would have to go to the root of where this comes from. Where do you think the root of this comes from? Probably like typical textbook daddy issues. Ah, okay. So childhood. Okay. Would you say you have textbook daddy issues? I think so. Okay. So now you're aware of this. Okay. What are you doing to heal your daddy issues? I go to therapy. I read books. And I'm trying How to not go into therapy. Process. I think that until just recently, I was like, it's a lifelong process. And I kind of feel like there can be a point in time where the healing is complete. I mean, I know things are always going to happen, but it doesn't have to be. Um, it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to take up that much time. So, um, Claire, I want to reach into the camera and give you a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Okay. You, too. I, I, could, I was giving you some tough love to start, but I'm going to start giving you some gentle love right now. And Thank then you. I'll transition you know I need to it. tough love again. Okay. <laughs> so, so how long have you been doing therapy? A long time. Def like this, okay. this stint, um, almost three years. And okay. in my whole life, like about like 15 years. Okay, 15 years of therapy. So here's the challenge I have with therapy. It's just a challenge. And by the way, I'm a big proponent of therapy. Mm -hmm. um, so the problem is doing it once a week. And if you were doing it once a week, which I'm assuming you're probably doing a little less than once a week. Once a week about. Okay, once a week about. I don't think that's enough time. I think we should do therapy every day. Because, and that's number one. Number two is to integrate what's known as somatic therapy into this process. So I want someone to write in the chat box, somatic therapy, also known as energy release work. So your daddy issues are stored in your body. Yeah. And it's, it's time to talk therapy. It's very difficult to do it completely from the mind. Okay. Right. So my suspicion is, is you have it stored in your body. This is one of the reasons why when I did the Hoffman process, this is, yeah. this is really um, at the, at their, uh, their center in Napa. It is emotional release work. It's designed to get it out of your body here. 
Um, RM wrote somatic therapy right yeah. there. Okay. So I would in suggest investing in Googling in that. I'm actually doing this uh, Monday. I'm doing breath work with a, a person to help me release some of the energy that's still stored up over the ending of my last relationship, because I recognize that there's some residue that's still in my body. So I would invite you to do somatic therapy. Here's okay. the thing. Okay. So not everyone loves this woman. Some people think she's a scam artist. Some people think she's clueless, but I want someone in the chat box to write down Teal Swan. Teal oh yeah, Swan. I know of Teal Swan. And yeah. she has a video on self-discipline that I happen to like. So self-discipline, Claire, is I'm walking down a street. There's a hole in the sidewalk. Okay. I see it there. I fall in. It's a habit. It's not my fault. Okay. That's, you know, you know, what's the hole in your sidewalk? The hole in my sidewalk. The hole in my sidewalk is like using these excuses to not move forward. So the hole in your sidewalk is daddy issues. Among other things, I think. Yeah. yeah. Means, oh, well, you, by the way, you've got lots of holes in your sidewalk. So, so mm -hmm. you're aware I have daddy issues. So you have the, so the thing is before you fall into the hole, go look, I know the hole. Right. Self-discipline says I'm going to, okay, maybe another analogy would be this. If you saw a bonfire, would you put your hand in it? No. Why? It's pretty. It is so pretty. But why wouldn't you put your hand in it? Because I don't want to get burned, Jonathan. Ah, so you know your soul's in the sidewalk. But you're right. like, no, it's so pretty. I want to touch it. It's so pretty. Like, at some point, you have to take ownership of your life and go like, yeah. okay, look, I can give excuses. You know, um, again, I, I believe in talk therapy, but I believe in cognitive behavioral therapy that's very designed to make rapid changes quickly. I believe in doing week-long retreats to work on oneself. And then I believe in therapy every day. Some sort of introspection, self-reflection work every single day. Doing, doing exercises to work on oneself. So you know you have a pattern of choosing a certain type of man. So maybe you should do what George in Seinfeld did. And if you remember the TV show Seinfeld, George decided to do the opposite, the opposite. of all his natural instincts. Okay. Maybe yeah. just start dating the completely different type of man might be one solution to your yeah. um, affliction. And like change well. my behavior. I think I want to change my behavior to do the opposite. So you have to want to do the self-aware. You're already self-aware. So that's 80% of it. Now you have to do the last 20%. Yeah. So it comes back to you want to date differently. So you're an attractive woman. You have no problem getting men swiping right on you and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure you're loaded with men in your inbox. Maybe just start dating. By the way, I just saw a video that said- We all have women little crushes on Jonathan. We're all Jonathan's little fangirl club. Okay, well, thank you. How tall are you, Claire? Five, six. So I just saw a video that said statistics show women who date men who are five, six, or five, seven are the happiest. So oh, stop that's dating so wonderful. <laughs> so stop dating men who are six feet tall. Um, I, I don't know. If I, I tend to, I, I was actually, I was just talking about this. Like, you know how they all say like women, a tall man is really important to women. That's yeah. never been important to me. I just found out about that watching dating apps. I've always um, kind of dated shorter men. Okay. So anyway, well, they and I wonder if shorter men are just more grateful because they know they have this insecurity within themselves that so when someone- I feel like they I try know. harder. I feel like they really try harder. And yeah. I feel like they really put a lot of effort on other stuff, like their personality. I'm six foot two and weigh 210 pounds. I don't have to try that hard. <laughs> I know. You lucky dog, you. Yeah, yeah and I still you got a full head You will scallywag you, Jonathan. I know. Well, you know, believe me. I mean, it's it, women are just as dysfunctional out there. You're an Adonis. So, um, so 
what are you going to do different tomorrow, today? Um, I am, I'm going to take myself out. I've been wanting to take myself out for a really long time. Okay. Okay. And I usually, when I go out by myself, I usually make a lot of friends. Um, but I'm not going to like try to, you know, I'm always, oh, let me get your number. I'm always like trying to like look and sh look for men and stuff. Right. I'm very, I'm not, I'm not like, um. I'm not traditional. What have you ever had a good relationship in your life? I think so. Okay, let's talk about that. Think of one particular relationship right now that you thought was a good relationship. It How long like ago healthy, was it? Healthy enough, but there was like some alcoholism. But I mean, you drank too much. Enough. Yeah. You drank too much. I did, and he was definitely an alcoholic. Not okay. too. Late. So what made that a health, what made that, I said, have you ever had a healthy relationship? Well, that's what I'm saying. Why did like you consider that a healthy relationship? You're, I'm not uh, going to lie. I'm not going to try to like church it up. Like I have not had very good, like healthy functional relationships, but out of all of them, this one is like the best one. What makes it, what made, is it the current relationship you're talking about? No, I'm not in a relationship right oh. now. Okay. I'm Let's go back to the AF. alcohol. Let's go back to the alcohol relationship. How mm -hmm. long did you two date each other? Like five years. Five years. Okay. Did you? Was it uh, exclusive? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, who ended the relationship? I did. And you ended it because? I was like looking at myself and being sober, and I wanted to do more with my life. And he wasn't there with me. Okay. Okay. Do you, are you still in contact with him? No. Okay. Um, so I want you to go back. How many men have you, how many men have you dated for longer than three months that you were in a relationship with? In other words, monogamous exclusive. How many men? How many? Yeah, pick a number. Is there men yet? I'm no spring chicken. All right. Um, so let's just give you, I, I I'll, I'll okay, be generous. Like, I'll say you've say had, like this have you had more than five? Have you had more five. than five? No, I would say it's like five. Okay, five. Okay. So I want you to look at each relationship and ask yourself the following questions. You can come back and look at the one minute, one hour and 17 minute mark to write these down. You can go back and write these down. First question I want you to ask yourself, what positive things about myself did I learn in this relationship? What positive things about myself did I learn in this relationship? How have I healed a wound from this relationship? How have I healed a wound? In conjunction with that same question, have I healed from this relationship? Have I gone through the grieving process of this relationship? That should have been number two. The third one, how have I healed? Number three, four, what was good about each relationship? And lastly, what am I most grateful for? I want you to look at each relationship and ask yourself, these questions so you can say, what can I take from all of these experiences and then operate in a completely different way going forward? So this is a self-reflective exercise to really go inward and from the premise of what's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, and expecting different results. I'm inviting you to go, how yeah, am I going to do things do differently completely. compared to these, all these relationships? I want to be completely Claire, will you do that for me? Absolutely. I will do that for you, Jonathan. No okay. question. Yes. I want to do things completely differently because I want my life to be different. <laughs> Maria says, when you learn to quit, it becomes a habit. Yes. Is that right? I'm going to process that for I a mean, second. I mean, quitting, quitting the things that are bad quit, for you. Don't you quit create the things that are good for you. Preferably a new habit. Okay. Yeah. I feel like there was maybe one more thing I wanted to say, Jonathan. Okay. Oh, when you talked about have I healed from a wound with this relationship, 
Now, do you mean like a past wound, like a childhood wound? Yeah, I'm talking about your daddy shit. (laughs) Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How have I healed from this? So I am aware that I have an anxious attachment style. And throughout my last few relationships, I've becoming progressively less anxious. I've been healing this anxious wound where if they don't text me back in 12 and a half seconds, I lose my mind. Um, But I'm bump. I'm saying that tongue in cheek. Yeah. Um, but it's, I've gotten too. so much better at heal. I've he, I've been healing that, you know, and that's one of the byproducts of my past relationships. Yeah. I'm hoping I can really find true love because I feel like all I've ever been is unhealthily attached because that's what I thought that love was. Yeah. So I'm, I don't know. I really am on a sincere path to find true love. I don't really think that a lot of people do really do that. Do they? I hope so. If you're out there, so, so, join me. Um, see, here's the thing. True love is grab a mirror right now and look in the mirror. That's where true love lies. Um, there's a great uh, Cat Stevens song. Uh it's he's, his new name is Yusuf something or other. It's called I Go Where True Love Goes. Um, but it, it's really, I believe when we can find the true love within ourselves, that's the true love we need to seek. Totally. And I've totally been and there so, too. I've totally so been there to, too. I'm just... So I interrupted. I apologize. So I want to differentiate between a life partner, okay? Just instead of saying, I'm looking for true love, I'm inviting you to look at true love for within yourself. But I invite you to reframe the languaging. I'm looking for a life partner whom we're both in love with each other, okay? We don't have to make it so grandiose, my true love. It might be that in this lifetime, you might not find that person. It might be that we do this 100,000 times and like, like if I, you believe in multiverses and all kinds of, uh, reincarnation, all those kind of things. This may not be your journey might be to work on yourself. In the meantime, find a life partner that will play with you in For these real. modalities. For real. That was, yeah. I, I've been using, I've been using that kind of language too, like talking about playmates and stuff. I just realized that I need someone for me, and I'm just using me as the, uh, just as a comparison, like I'm addicted to personal development, self-help and spiritual work. So I'm looking for a playmate to help me grow in this area. Uh, So, but I say playmate, not from an entertainment perspective, but from an introspective growth perspective, because to me, this is fun shit. Like I'm doing a mushroom journey as my birthday present today. Oh, fun. I'm going to do a micro dose instead of a heroic dose because I just want to commune with people and have fun. I'm doing it by myself with a group of people, but I mean, this is the present I'm giving to myself and maybe a partner, my ideal partner wants to join me and do those kind of things. My point is, and sharing this all, I get it, that start visualizing that that playmate in your life. It's one of the reasons why I always say I'm looking for a relationship where we spend three or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in our personal, our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. Or getting married. <laughs> Jonathan's way, got a clear vision. Yeah. So when you have your clear vision, you know, that's your barometer. That's your, that's your inner guidance system saying, if this doesn't feel right, then move on to the next person. Cause there's a bus coming out of the bus stop all the time. There's all these buses driving by. Ain't that the, the truth? The right bus will stop in front of you. Men are like buses. Another one women comes along like every buses. five minutes. Humans are like buses, men and women okay. alike. Okay. I just, I just, I know you're a female, so you said man, but I have to say it. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute. I wanted to just, uh, bu- 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 bu. Debbie advice. says exactly. All right, sweetheart, we're going to ride. Okay. Uh, big hugs, hugs to you. Birthday hugs. Thank you. Thank All the you. best. And your micro dose. Uh, Touch well, the thank sky. you. I appreciate it. Big okay, Jonathan, until next time, thank you so much for this coaching session. Oh, you're very welcome. It's an honor to do be of service. So thank oh, you. Oh, likewise. Thank you. All right. So Claire just gave us an interesting conversation.
You know, we talked about daddy issues, but more importantly, what we were talking about is recognizing and being aware that if we have a pattern and we're familiar with that pattern, that's like a hole in the sidewalk. If we continue to fall into it, at some point we have to take responsibility for our part. So how do we how do we avoid the si holes in the sidewalk? We do introspective work. We do personal development, self-help and spiritual work. We do therapy. We do somatic therapy, all of these things. And, and, and I invite everyone to learn nonviolent communication by Marshall Rosenberg so we can actually become more aligned to who we are and what we want from a romantic perspective. And it's not about finding true love other than the true love within ourselves, but it's more about finding that life partner who that we can play in in these modalities and preferably grow with one another and support one another when the then the the shit's going to hit the fan at some point we're all going to get sick it'd be nice to have someone that is there to hold your hand and to be a witness in your life is this sinking in is this resonating with you please let me know if it is uh, post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. As always, if you find value in my videos, please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if you want to connect with me directly, there's links below to schedule a discovery call with me to see if working with a coach is right for you. And to join my group called Midlife Love Mastery to get my dating vows to follow me on Instagram, all listed below.